In this video, we're going to look at how to write a recursive rule for arithmetic sequences. A recursive rule is essentially asking, what do you do to the previous term to get the next? So it's more looking at what the pattern of what you do and not actually coming up with the rule for how to get that term itself. It's just what are you doing each time. Some people have said repeat, reoccur, um, you know, all that stuff is, happens to be recursive in nature. The notation we use for us in this class is going to be with t of n and t of n plus 1. From writing explicit rules, we remember that t of n is the nth term. t of n plus 1 is the next term after it because we are just adding 1 to n. So for instance, if I were to have t of 5, that would be the same thing as saying you have t of 4 plus 1, and that's how you know that you have one term after 4. So that's what we mean by the next term. 4 is the nth term, one term after it is then the fifth term. So that's just the simple notation that we use. So let's get to our examples. So we have two different lists here, whereas we take a look at what's going on in each of these. Remember that we underline, so this is the first term, that's the very first term in the sequence. This is the second, and 68 would then be the third. So t of 1 is equal to 32, t of 2 is equal to 50. And so the idea in a recursive rule is what are you doing each time to go from 32 to 50 or 50 to 68? And so in this scenario, we are adding 18 every single time to go from one term to the next. So if we use our notation for the, nth, uh, for the recursive rule, t of 2 is equal to the same thing as t of 1 plus 1. And that's going to equal my t of one term plus 18. Because you are adding 18 every single time to go from one term to the next. t of one is the very first term, so uh, that's why you have this recursive rule. So to generalize it, we don't want to use just two and ones. We're going to say we're going to have t of n plus one, and that's going to equal what are we doing to t of n, the one before it. You're always eight, adding 18 to it. All right, so to get the third term, you're adding 18 to the second. To get the second term, you're adding 18 to the first term. So that's why we mean the next and the one before it, so t of n plus 1 and t of n. Of course, you do always have to have that statement telling everybody where you start to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Because if all you were given was this recursive rule, you wouldn't know that you're starting at 32. So that's why you need to also have a secondary statement which tells you what term 1 is. You could say term 0, but we like to use term 1. So to quickly do the second example, 46 is the first term, 26 is the second, so on and so forth. We take a look at what we're doing each time, and it looks like in this scenario we are subtracting 20 every single time to go from one term to the next. So to find t of 4, for example, we would be doing t of 3, and then that 3 would be plus 1. That's what t of 4 is equal to. And then that means that you're doing your term 3, and then you're going to be adding, or adding, you're going to be subtracting 20 from it. So to find t of 4, you're subtracting 20 from t of 3. So our general notation for n would be t of n plus 1 is equal to t of n, the one before it, minus 20. And then you still need that initial term statement to make sure everybody knows that you're starting at the 46th term for term 1. And these examples would be our recursive rules. Remember, it's just simply what do you do to the previous term to get the next? We're continually adding or subtracting in arithmetic sequences. So that's the notation we have where you just add 18. There's no n or anything else here. It's just adding 18 to the one before.